I don't know if you can hear me, but this is the Infrared Pro Max 2023 edition. And I don't know if you noticed, but it is quite loud. However, noise is just one thing when it comes to a red light therapy panel. I was really excited when I heard that Infrared were coming out with a new product range. Their previous panel, the Infrared Flex Max, scored third in my 2021 comparison series. So of course I was eager to see how Infrared had improved on something that was already really good. Now when you head over to the Infrared website and you look at this new Pro Max panel, you will see that yes, there have been some developments. Let me run you through these. First up, there's a new aluminium design. We have a new control panel. There's now four wavelengths in this panel instead of just the standard two, 660 and 850 nanometer light. It's got inbuilt pulsing. You can pulse the light from one hertz right through to 10,000 hertz. There's a dimming or intensity function. So if you wanna do longer sessions or you wanna use it as a background ambient light, or you're worried about overdosing, you can now do that all through the control panel. It also comes bundled with some great accessories, including some eyewear with a protective case and a really good high quality manual. Form function, it is the same size. We've got 36 inches tall and about nine inches across. And this particular panel includes 300 LEDs. Now, those LEDs, if you head back to the Infrared website, you will see a feature that to be honest, took me by surprise. According to Infrared, these are six watt LEDs. Typically panels have three watt or maybe five watt LEDs. A long time ago, I stopped caring or even reporting on LED wattages. All I did and all I still do is measure the actual irradiance, how much light is being delivered to the body. I use my spectrometer to do this and I found that even panels listed at five watt LEDs sometimes didn't put out as much power as a three watt LED panel. I won't get into all the technical details around this, but at the end of the day, it's how much light is being delivered rather than the rating on the LED chip. What's the deal with these six watt LEDs? Well, a lot of people got really excited saying, oh my God, this is gonna be so powerful. It's a total game changer. And yeah, I was kind of interested myself. I spoke to a few engineers in the space and they were questioning how authentic that claim was. I should also mention that these LEDs are dual chip LEDs, meaning one bulb has two chips in there, which is great. You're gonna see better light coverage. You can get more wavelengths into a one panel. Now, what I think's happened is you're seeing two three watt LED chips in one bulb, hence the six watt claim. And as I'm gonna show you soon, my tested power irradiance figures support my assumption. Okay, so let's get the spectrometer out. Yes, we're gonna test the power output, but I also want to have a good look at what wavelengths are being delivered from the new Infrared Pro Max. Okay, so on the spec sheet, we see that there are four wavelength peaks, 630, 660 in the red, 830 and 850 in the near infrared. So let's fire up the panel and see what is actually coming out. All right, so with this first reading, we see a peak up here at 658 or 660, and then we see the second big peak at 850. You can see these other smaller peaks. One down here is at your 630, and then here's your 830. But if I take a couple of readings, you will see that most of the light is still going to your traditional 660, 850 nanometer light. Those smaller peaks, your 830s and your 630, don't actually have much light going to them. I'm moving all around the panel here to get a bunch of different readings. Uh, so I don't know the exact makeup, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's more like a Biomax panel where majority of the light is going to the 660 and 850. Because as you're seeing here, those peaks in the 630 and 850 are nowhere near as high as your 660 and 850 nanometer peaks. Now for the power readings. Infrared on their website state that the radiance of this panel is 250 milliwatts over centimeter squared. That number is huge. It doesn't say the distance that it's tested at, but typically the standard for the industry seems to be a six inch or 15 centimeter reading. I can tell you now that 250 milliwatts would be out of this world. I had my doubts and yes, when I did my testing, I can tell you that that number is outrageous maybe. It's not accurate, let me say that. So I tested at six inches and I had a peak reading of 85 milliwatts over centimeter squared. That was the highest reading I could find while moving around the panel. I then took nine readings across the face of the panel and averaged the results. 
the figure came out to be 72 milliwatts over centimeter squared. 72 is much lower than 250. I really wish companies didn't put these outlandish huge numbers on their website. It does create confusion. If you are gonna put a big number like that, at least support it, show how it was measured, show what distance it was taken at as well. Otherwise it just creates confusion. And of course people are gonna see these big numbers and think, all right, well this one's more powerful than a competitor. So hopefully by me sharing my numbers, companies will be a bit more careful going forward, but who knows. Anyway, 72 milliwatts at six inches is a really good number from a therapeutic point of view. That's a ton of power. It's not lacking. There's no issues whatsoever. Now, as for total power output, that looks at the power radiance by the treatment size, it had a figure of 107 watts. This puts it in 11th place for all the panels I've tested. And what's surprising is that it's only just above the previous generation infrared flex panel. Again, if this had six watt LEDs, it would be a lot higher than the previous generation panel. While we're on the topic of these six watt LEDs, typically the more power an LED is putting out, the more heat it generates. One thing I didn't mention in my introduction is this is one of the first panels I've tested, I think, that doesn't have side vents. It's got some vents on the back, but only around the fans and a few on the top, but on the side, it's completely enclosed. When I saw that straight away, I had question marks over that six watt LED claim. Most panels have a lot of vents on the sides and the back and on the top because they need good airflow to keep these LEDs cool, especially if they're putting out decent power outputs. Okay, enough about power and wavelengths. What about EMF and sound? Well, I don't know if you can hear this, but I'm gonna turn this thing on again. This thing is loud. How loud? 68 and a half decibels. That's like really, really loud, especially for 2023, where a lot of panels are below 50 decibels. It sounds like a portable handheld vacuum cleaner. And as for EMF, the numbers aren't great here either. There was a magnetic reading of 0.3 micro Teslas, which puts this into the orange category. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, can you please go down and hit the like and subscribe button? It will literally take you, what, two seconds, three seconds? Time yourself and let me know how long it takes. But I really do appreciate that time sacrifice and the support. Okay, so now for price, how much does this cost? And this is where things are a little bit more positive for the Infrared Pro Max. You see, you can get this panel for 1,199 US dollars. And discount code Alex saves you 10%. That brings the price down to 1,099 US dollars. Even better, there's free international shipping. So that figure I just gave you, that's how much you'll pay to get it to your door. If you take all of these numbers and do a value calculation, it means you're spending $10 to get one watt of therapeutic red light. A few years ago, anything under 10 was exceptional. Today we're seeing panels around six or $7 on the value calculation. Now, what about stands? Well, there are two options here. You can get a base stand for $100 extra when purchasing this panel, or it's about $140 if you buy it later. Or there is a movable, floor stand option where you can link multiple panels together and that sells for 500 US dollars. Finally, it comes with a three year warranty, a 60 day return period and no restocking fee, which is great. All right, now for the pros and cons. First up, the pros. It does have dimming, it does have pulsing. These are two features that are becoming more and more common, but still not every panel has it. So it is good to see them in there. It also comes with a really nice manual and some great accessories. Also a nice little bonus. Of course, the big pro here is the price. You can get this for just over $1,000. Many years ago, I used to always say I wanted a panel under $1,000. With inflation now, we're seeing panels well over the thousand dollar mark. So for those who are on a tight budget and want a panel with more than just your 660 and the 850 nanometer light, and also some of those other advanced options, then the Infrared Pro Max is going to be an option, especially when you factor in the free international shipping. For $1,100, you get a 300 LED panel, putting out a great amount of power with four different wavelengths and a bunch of cool features. Finally, I like the 60 day return period and no restocking fee. Okay, so now for the things I don't like, and there are a few. First up is its size. It's only nine inches across. If you've seen my light coverage videos now, you'll know that you really do need wider panels if you wanna treat a big chunk of your body. Of course, you could get another one of these and have two side by side, and you're gonna get 18 width coverage, but still, a lot of people just wanna get one panel. I feel like the new standard has to be 12 inches now. Nine's just too narrow. There's a few things about the panel itself that I don't like. Firstly, the lack of ear vents does concern me. I'm not too sure what the heat buildup would be like if you had this running for, I don't know, an hour or so. Not that you should be using hour long treatments, but what happens if you've got a few people using it 
or what happens if you're just using it in a hot environment? I don't know if it's gonna have longevity issues. I hope not, but it's something I haven't seen before. And it's also quite an easy fix on Infrared's part. Next, we have the higher than usual EMF levels. But worst of all is the sound. Remember, you're standing next to these panels for 5, 10, 20 minutes a day, maybe five, six times a week. There's only been a few panels I haven't enjoyed using over the years. And to be honest, this is gonna be added to the list. It's quite loud and it shouldn't be happening in 2023. There's other panels out there that I've tested that are putting out just as much light, if not more, and they are much quieter than this. So I don't know what's going wrong here, whether it is just because there's no ventilation on the side and that's causing the louder wear, I don't know, but it's not great. I also need to show you some stuff on the back I don't like. Firstly, there's no carry handle at the top or on the bottom. It's not an absolute deal breaker, but if you are gonna be moving this panel around a lot or just picking it up to hang it on a wall, those carry handles do make a big difference. So again, it's unusual to see that it's missing in this particular panel. Also, you'll notice that there's no rubber feet on the back. In the box, there are rubber feet included, Typically, we see these already screwed onto the back, but this wasn't the case with the Infrared panel. And yes, I could have screwed them in myself. However, there wasn't the supplied screwdriver to screw them in, and there were six feet, and I thought, you know what? I'm just not gonna bother putting them on to show you that, hey, this is missing. And finally, when we spin this around, you'll see that the only time you see Infrared is here on the control panel. There's a very small logo. Typically, we see branding on the side or on the front, but there's nothing really showing that this is an infrared panel. Again, not a deal breaker, but it does make you think, why did they not do that? Are they trying to cut costs? Are they doing that from a value point of view? Or did they just not care? I'm not too sure. All right, so now let's talk about operation because this is another issue. Firstly, there's no included remote or application you can use to control this panel. Again, not a deal breaker, not an absolute failure or anything like that, but a lot of panels are including them now and they are kind of handy just being able to turn them on or off or use your phone to tap into some of the advanced features. The bigger issue though is this control panel. It's what you'd expect from a panel, say five years ago. Yeah, the buttons are all nice and easy to press, but the screen itself is very small and it means using some of those advanced options like dimming or pulsing require a lot of button presses and a lot of referring to the manual. If you compare this to some of the new panels that have touchscreen control panels or even a large LCD color screen, it makes this quite cumbersome to use. Even with the manual and going through some menus, a few times I made mistakes and I just get a little bit frustrated. Another thing I should point out, you can actually start this panel without any light being emitted. You can disable both the red and the near infrared light, turn it on, the fans wear up. I wouldn't be surprised if some people have accidentally done that and stood in front of this panel thinking they get an infrared light when actually there's nothing happening. Finally, when we talk about the wavelengths, I should mention that a pro was the fact that you're getting four wavelengths instead of just the standard 660 and 850. However, I do need to point out that you're not getting 810 nanometer light, which is something that I personally am quite excited by, and I know a lot of you out there are also excited by it. But secondly, the bigger issue is the discrepancy between the marketed power output figure and the real world power output figure. That combined with the whole six watt LED thing, it does make you think, what's going on here? Are they deliberately being a bit deceivious or is it just a misunderstanding? But it does leave me at least wondering what's going on here. And again, we shouldn't be seeing this, especially from a company that's been in this space a very long time and has produced some really good panels. Remember, the previous generation panel placed third out of 12 panels in my 2021 comparison series. Okay, so overall, should you buy this panel? Well, it's gonna work, right? It's important to remember this. Doesn't matter what the numbers are, the wavelengths and the EMF and all that, you're gonna get a panel here that's putting out a decent amount of red light in the right wavelength. There's no issues there. It's not like we turn this on and it's emitting a little bit of green and is dangerous to use. It is gonna work, however, as a consumer, we're blessed and there are so many options out there. I mean, I think there's 16 different red light therapy companies selling panels today. So the real question is, should you buy this or should you spend your money elsewhere and get another product? Of course, that's what I do in a lot of my comparison reviews, so be sure to subscribe to check them out. But in a nutshell, with the Infrared Pro Flex, my biggest concern is that sound. Yes, the control panel is a bit fiddly to use. No, there's no remote. No, there's no handle on the back. Yeah, we may have been tricked by the power figures and the wavelength still more 660 and 850. But really, when it comes to real world use and me using this on a daily basis for months or years ahead, 
that sound is enough to put me off. But that's me. You may be different. In which case, like I said, it's going to tick a lot of boxes. The real selling point though is the price point. Coming in just over $1,000 is going to be quite attractive for a lot of people. However, as I always do in these video reviews, it's always important to look at all options before getting your credit card out. So first up, I want to talk about some panels that are around this price mark. The best thing to do here is to go over to Light Therapy Insiders, check out this shopping tool, filter everything by wall panels and sort by price. And you can see all those panels that are around that $1,000 price mark. And you'll see that actually there are quite a few. Now, if the panel's in that database, I've done a review on it. So go check that review out to learn more about that particular panel. We've got panels from Huga, from Mitre Red Light, from Rouge. A lot of these panels are available around $1,000. Of course, if you just want something quieter, well, again, use the shopping tool, sort it by sound, and you can see panels that are under 50 decibels. Block Blue Light's Mega Panel came out to be 46 decibels, for instance. The Biomax 900 or the Mito Light Panel are both under 50 decibels. So there are lots of options. And if you're getting confused by all of these options, check out this playlist. It is all the reviews I've done in the last year or two on my red light therapy panels. Highly recommend checking it out. There's some great content in there.